and he's coming to us from uh, the uh, University of Hanoi or, uh, in Vietnam. And he's going to talk to us today about water and Phobos and Deimos and implications for water and tectites. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about water and Phobos and Deimos. And uh, in particular, I talk about uh, the implication of water in terrestrial tectite for the giant impact origin hypothesis for the moons of Mars. And here's a quick summary, uh, a quick outline. First one about summary, and then about our study review of water content in tectile. And final is about the implication for water on Phobos and Demo. Next. In summary, tectile are terrestrial impact ejector that in some cases have been subject to intense heating and massive loss of water. And they may serve as analog for orbital debris resulting from giant planetary impact. And in this study, we reviewed the water content in Australia and Tiktai, uh, which, which, uh, which was the highest uh, energy impact Tiktai, and show that why, why it's generally very, very low. It's uh, just about 0.01 weight percent. It's not zero. And this suggests that uh, even in a giant impact origin hypothesis for Phobos and Demo, the original material come forming the moon might have contained significant water. Okay, so here about terrestrial tectile, a natural glasses derived from impact melting uh, uh, upper crust rock then ejected, ejected into space uh, before foam back and quenching. And tectile presented in, uh, in many forms, spark form tectile, ablative form, and moon known. And here's about the origins and diverse morphologies of tectile uh, we presented in uh, Fioroi, the um, teardrop, the dumbbell shape. Next. And Australia's in Tiktai, other Tiktai uh, were found in Vietnam, in Laos, Cambodia, uh, Southeast Asia, and Australia. And Australia's in Tiktai was the largest uh, uh, associate with the largest shoe field in, in the world. So it will have, so Tiktai, Australia's and Tiktai will have the highest energy Tiktai. Okay, so now we do a little bit review on water in Tiktai. In general, Tiktai contain much less water than volcanic glass, uh, for example, with obsidian. And Australia's and Tiktai are, um, as the drunkard Tiktai, is just about 0 0.7 million years ago. And they present the highest energy tectai and it spans the largest shoe field. And they also have the highest water contents among the tectai. And to determine the water contents in, in tectai, there are two methods. First one is about uh, the manometric methods. Uh, it means you heating up uh, the sample and heating up the sample into a vapor and you collect the gas and measuring. Uh, the, uh, the volume of the gas you extracted. So, and from uh, measuring the volume of gas extracted, you can derive the water concentration on tectile. And the second method is the Fourier transform infrared spectrometry. Basically, you're signing up a, a light beam, a infrared light beam, and you receive uh, the absorption spectra. And from the intensity absorb, and, some, and from the absorption intensity, you can derive the water concentration. And FTR is the most accurate and widely used method. And in this study, we review uh, all published FTR water content measurement for Australia and TikTok. And here's about the result. So why most other TikTok uh, are very low in water? Australia's in TikTok, uh, Australia's in TikTok are uh, um, having uh, higher in water contents. It's about 0.0115%. And even with the most travel tectai in Australia, the, it still have containing significant water. It's not high, it's just about 0.01 weight percent, but it still have water. Next. So now let's take a look, uh, let's take a quick look in more detail about the high energy Australia. Here's a, a very impressive experiment uh, done in here at NASA M. Uh, the artificially ablated tectile have been reproduced with the same surface sculpture, with a similar uh, tin, here's about a uh, similar tin section, 
and also the corresponding detail of flange structure. And the experiment demonstrated that uh, the Australian thick tie had been, the, the Australian thick tie or Australia had been melted two times. Um, the second time by the, the entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. And this demonstrates that the thick tie had, Australian thick tie, Australia's thick tie had been, um, the trajectory had, had experienced exoveric suborbital trajectory. And with the ejected temperature up to 2000 degrees Celsius, and with ejection velocity uh, from 6.5 to 11 uh, kilometers per second. And this velocity is much larger than Mars, uh, uh, the, the escape velocity from Mars surface. And if, uh, and with the, and this, and for the debris forming Phobos and Demod by giant impact, so uh, surely it is, uh, it's, it have to be, uh, the velocity is smaller than escape velocity, so it will be less heated even than uh, Australian t Next. Yes. And although of their high energy from the Australia line, um, it's still containing water about 0.01 weight percent. Next. So what does it mean for Phobos and Demod? So uh, as uh, Ju and uh, have talked before, so Phobos and the origin of Phobos and Demod is still not well constrained. And one of the prevailing hypotheses is Phobos and Demod are recreated impact ejector from a giant impact on Mars. And people classically be believe that the, from this uh, origins, uh, the orbital debris from a giant impact are devoid of water. However, the survival of significant water in Australia tectite, uh, even with the highest energy tectite in Australia, uh, have demonstrated, have implied that uh, even in the giant impact origin hypothesis for the moon of Mars, the water contents in the original material forming Phobos and Demod might have contained um, significant water. And the Australia's in tectite might provide an approximate estimate for the water contents about 0.01 weight percent for the original material forming Phobos and Demod. Next. And for next step, we need to do more water content measurements uh, of Australian Tiktai because now the sample uh, are limited, uh, it's just about 32 measurements. Next. And also with collected more sample and doing more measurement, we need to know also the constant uh, uh, our own sample. It means we need to know about the short location. Also, we need to know more uh, about the curation history, how the sample has been preserved. Next. And also, we need to, to understand more about the dispersion in water content among uh, Indochina Tiktai. Next. There are dispersion in here between uh, the, the water contents of uh, of Tiktai in, in Thailand. So even with the uh, uh, same uh, place to collect the sample size, even with uh, the same people doing the measurement, there are a dispersion of water measurement in here. And we need to determine that if this dispersion is a real or it's just a measurement in consistency. And, next. and the final one, we also need to determine if there is a gradient, a water gradient decrease from Indochina to Australia. Next. Like this, where we have a decrease. So people often argue that the moon don't take time uh, were formed in, uh, in the near impact site. So it has higher in water content than other type of tectile. So we have a gradient, a decrease gradient from moon don't take time in Indochina to Australia. Next. Or the, all this deep Persian is just or there are no dispersions. On, uh, on the tie of take tie have the almost similar, the same in water content. And in conclusion, in a giant impact origin hypothesis for the moon of Mars, so the water content is expected to, in, in the original material, is expected to be low, but it's not necessarily zero. And Australian take tie might provide an approximate estimate for the water contents uh, in the original material forming Phobos and Demos with approximately 0.01 weight percent. 
And however, uh, we need to do more work to, to understand about the survival and fate of water in the formation of tectites, as well as and it would be to understand about uh, the survival and fate of water on uh, on the original or on, on the original of, um, material of Phobos and Demo. And thank you. All right. Any questions? Yes, Bill. No, no, wait. You have to use the microphone. Oh, this is very interesting. Um, I, I missed it at the very beginning of your talk because I know these uh, tectites have been mysterious in terms of what impact crater made them. Do we know what impact crater did this yet, or is that a mystery? So what? Uh, so the question is to where the impact site. Yeah. Um, actually, now the impact site is not clearly. It could be uh, in uh, you know in the Sea of Vietnam or in, in the land. The the reason we we uh, we, we did or we believe on that is uh, so first of all the Australasian tectite have been higher in water content compared with other type of tectite. So it could be explained that uh, because uh, the tropical you know Vietnam and also Australia and South Asia is is a is a west region. Or the second thing is uh, so um, so it implies that uh, the the impact side. Uh, is uh, the impact site may be in the west side, and possibly it is is uh, is from offshore impact site, and uh, and the second evidence is might be on the um, the activity, the ten beryllium activity of uh, of tectai. I have not yet have uh, show this in here, but uh, people have did people have done uh, the mapping of ten beryllium activities. Of, uh, of the uh, of, uh, of the tectite, and it seems that uh, it seems to be that uh, uh, the presumed impact site is located near us in uh, Israel in the Sea of, of Vietnam. Yeah. It, can I ask a follow-up? I, I won't ask if. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll ask afterwards. Okay. 